Hey there folks, I'm working on this project and I need to cut some sheet goods. Now, I don't have a track saw, love to have a track saw, but I don't have one because I don't do a lot of cutting of sheet goods and track saws are quite expensive. Um, if I needed one, if I was doing a lot of cutting of sheet goods, I'd probably get one, but I don't. So I looked at some of those retrofit kits where you could take your circular saw and hook it to a track and that sort of stuff. Still a little on the expensive side and some of the reviews are not as great. So I was looking for a, a long straight edge, uh, something that will cu cut at least eight feet because that's what I'm going to be cutting. And I found this. The Craig Straight Edge Guide Extra Large. I picked this up at uh, a local a uh, store called Rideouts. I, I just love that store. They have all sorts of, of amazing woodworking supplies and equipment and all that sort of stuff. So I picked it up there. Try to keep it local. So this straight edge, it, it cuts material up to eight feet. I'll just run through the packaging. Um, it has a quick setup, some sort of grip max, and it has guided cutting. So it makes perfect straight cuts and full sheets of plywood with guided cutting and some other languages there. A laundry cut quickly and precisely every time with cutting indicators. Not sure what that means, but I will find out. Secure the guide to the material and make your cuts with ease. That's something to do with that clamping device right there. And you can use a circular saw, which I'm gonna be using. And this is another reason why I got this. You can use a router as well as a jigsaw. So I thought that was neat. And on the back, makes perfectly straight cuts, full sheets, extra long straight edge cutting guide. You can get this in a shorter version um, that's shorter than eight feet, but the goods that I'm gonna be doing is a minimum eight feet. So that's why I got this one. Um, Grip Max clamping, so that's that there. Retractable cut line indicators. And it includes two rail guides, 28 inches. I hope it contains more than that because that doesn't equal eight feet. Uh, two guide rails, pair connector bars, cutting indicator arms, adjustable grip max clamps, and a handle. I'm thinking that this that label might be for the non XL because uh, it's got it's got four bars there. Okay, no, no, no. It has uh, two 28 inch. Uh, guide rails and 224 inch okay so there we go so anyway let's uh let's open this up and see what it looks like okay that is tough stuff i'm just gonna get a new blade i didn't get a new blade i just cracked the top off This is pretty, still pretty tough to go through. Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. Okay, I won't bore you with this. I'll just show you the open package. Holy crow. That was a workout. Um, these are the four rails. And this is a, a box of goodies, which I assume helps put it together. And I'm guessing that there's some sort of instructions in this box somewhere. Oh, goody. Whole bunch of rails. Oh, plastic things. Oh. Register your King product. That's, that must be the handle on the end. These are the two, I think, measurement guides. That's probably for tightening it down. Empty bag. Some assorted bits and pieces and an Allen wrench. And a whole bunch of these rails. And a very thick owner's manual. Hmm. 
and this little bag of stuff. We got everything laid out. We've got it all here. 24 of these little set screws. We got a couple of thumb screws and a couple of nuts. There's another um, another screw and a nut. I think these might be extras. Maybe extras of those. I'm not quite sure. I've got some extra pieces. And you also need a Phillips screwdriver, straight edge, and a pencil to assemble this. Okay, we get into this stuff here. Uh, these are the upper and lower control, um, sorry, connector bars. We got the um, guide rail with the grip max, and we've got three more guide rails right here. We got the adjustable grip max clamp, and these here are the cutting indicator arms and the stops. And what else have we got here? Well, that's about it. Now, first step is I've got to thread all these little tiny set screws into all these holes. With this. I'll be back in about four days. And it's four weeks later. And I have all the set screws in. Yippee, time for me to retire. Next, I took these bars with set screws, sandwich it with the bar without the set screws, and then slide them into the bottom of the rails and loosely tighten those four set screws. So I slid another one of these rails over those... Um, those connecting pieces and then you get a long ruler ruler a long level to make sure that they're all aligned and then you tighten up the set screws um, to more or less its final position now I'm going to do this with the other two pieces and then connect those two big pieces together into one large piece Of course, this is not easy. Oh, gotta back off the screw a little. That's why it's not going in there. Ah, there we go. And it's a little bit tight, so most likely gotta back off the set screws. I think you went about halfway. Mm, those set screws look okay. Let's see if I can make this look really cool and make it work for a shot. Of course not. Ah, here we go. But again, put those about halfway. Loosely tighten those four. Make you gotta make sure that these set screws are not protruding down below, because otherwise you're not gonna get these rails together. Let's see if these will slide together easily. Oh, there you go. Like that. And slide that against there. Make sure that they're parallel. And then tighten these up. Now I've just connected the two big four foot pieces. One long, long straight edge. I accidentally tightened these up a little tiny bit too much. So when I connected these two pieces together, it was off here by about maybe a 32nd of an inch so i thought oh shoot so all i did was just release those four and it goes flush and then i just went and did uh, like a, a cross uh loose tightening fashion and then i snugged it all down uh, it didn't say anywhere to do a, a cross pattern but you know changing tires and stuff on cars that's what I do and it seems to work so that's what I did here and got a nice flush edge holy moly that is one long straight edge next you stick on the handle there's like three sliding points 
um, and there's a nut that goes on. Um, okay, yeah, so the nut and a bolt. Nut goes into that hole and you tighten it down with your Phillips screwdriver. Just make sure you don't lose the bolt or the nut, sorry. Okay, the Craig symbol goes in this direction, like that. And this has a nylon washer inside, which is great. Let's see if I can do this blind here now. Ah, worked. Okay, I'll go get a screwdriver and tighten that down. And that hex wrench, it actually snaps in right underneath the handle, which is quite handy, especially if you get on the job site and you want to make this shorter. You can uh, use that, shorten it, and then go cutting like crazy. Well now, assembling these cut line indicator stops, good luck if you got short, stubby, fat fingers. <laughs> a bit of a pain in the butt. You got to get that nut there that's between my two fingers. See that in, in the plastic? Got to get that in a little slot. Doesn't want to go in there that easily, but it, it goes in there. Then you just, that little thumb, uh, thumb nut, bolt, bolt, uh, goes in there. So, bit of a pain, but that's the next step. There's a reason why instructions are laid out in order. I skipped adding this piece in. So, no big deal. I just got to remove the handle and slide that in there. Should pay better attention. I guess next we have to install these, what are they called? Indicator arms. They go in uh, that piece that I forgot to uh, install. They go in that. So they just slide in through this little plastic bracket. It's underneath. And there's a, a little tab on the end have to ensure that, according to the instructions anyway, have to ensure that the tab is pointing inwards. And then you take these little, little things and it goes on over the arm. These are little stops. And I'm just gonna tighten it up so it won't move. Looking at the upper end, handles at the, right there behind me, this uh, this piece here is actually spring loaded. That's probably how it uh, how it attaches. I won't get into how it attaches now. Um, I might do that when I'm actually uh, cutting some stock. But that's interesting. It's it's spring loaded. Another interesting fact is that it looks like it may take a little bit more than eight foot of sheet stock. Got a couple of extra inches there, which is always great. And there you have it, folks. The unboxing and assembly of Craig Straight Edge Guide XL of the Fat uh, User's Guide here. It brings this brings you up to page seven of fifteen, and after that, there's like calibration and how to align it and all that sort of stuff. I won't touch on that now. I'll probably speak to it when I'm actually using it. But there you have it: the assembly of Craig Straight Edge guide xl thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video